Now, my name is Tan Kin Lien. Uh, I am not an investor, uh, but I have been following uh, the High Flux event. In my website and Facebook, I have posted uh, many of my views. Uh, so uh, when uh, Alex applied for this uh, protest rally uh, and is covered in the newspaper, somebody suggested to Alex, can you contact Mr. Tan to be a speaker? So I said, okay. And after I agreed, I asked Alex a few days later, how many speakers you have? He said, only one. Okay, so uh, not to worry. I give you three speeches today. Now, 34,000 retail investors invested a total of $900 million in the high flux preference shares and perpetual securities. I am not one of them. I did not invest in high flux. But I want to tell you that 900 million, how much it is. You remember 10 years ago, the Lehman bonds, the amount was only 500,000. High flux is two times. So it is a very big sum of money. Of the 900 million, 500 million were invested in the perpetual securities issued in 2016, just uh, slightly more than two years ago. Many of the people who bought these securities were not savvy investors. These investors thought that the securities were safe because they were approved by the relevant authorities, approved for sale to retail investors. Also, they thought that high flux operates water plants, and the water plants are strategic national assets. So these were the reasons why they uh, felt uh, confident to invest. Also, they were allowed to apply using the ATM. All right, so all these make it look quite uh, uh, approved. Within two years of the issue of the perpetual securities, High Flux has to apply to the court for protection against creditors and to reorganize the company. The retail investors are likely to lose more than 80% of the investment and could be as much as 97%. I don't have to tell you this because I think you know. Uh, you, you read about this. Now, what went wrong? In 2011, the Public Utilities Board called for a tender for Tuas Spring desalination plant. High Flux submitted a tender and proposed an integrated desalination and power plant. Water plant and power plant integrated. They were awarded the tender by PUB. Now, some of this information I myself didn't know. But among the investors, there are few who are quite knowledgeable. So they provide the information to me. So I'm not the expert, but because I got the information, I, I get to know uh, more about this. So one of the conditions of the tender PUB asked the tenderer to quote a price for the water and the concession is 25 years. Please quote a price and don't adjust the price because of 
cost of electricity. So this is one of the conditions. You quote a price, cannot adjust because of cost of power, electricity. Now, why did PUB ask the operator to fix the price of power in this manner? No adjustment for cost of electricity. We all know that what desalinated water needs a lot of electricity. And how can we know what is the price of electricity 25 years down the road? So because of this condition, high flux, in, I think, decided to build a power plant so that they can control the cost of electricity through the power plant. So this was the reason uh, why Hyflux proposed power plant with a desalination plant so as to protect against the cost of power. Now besides providing power for the desalination plant, Hyflux decided to build a bigger power plant that can supply electricity to the national grid. They signed a contract, and this is a contract for many years, I don't know how long, to buy LNG gas for the power plant. And the price is probably at the price at that time. So they want to lock up the power supply for a few years at a fixed price. Now under this LNG contract, high flux must take a specified quantity of gas, LNG gas, every month. And if you don't take, you pay a big penalty. Now at that time, the wholesale price of electricity, and this is the price that high flux get when they supply electricity to the national grid. At that time, the wholesale price was uh, quite at a level that was profitable for high flux. The wholesale price was okay at that time. So this was in 2011. And high flux got a tender and they built the water plant and the power plant. There were subsequent events that turned out to be a disaster for high flux. Remember, the tender was 2011 awarded. Between 2012 to 2014, the Energy Market Authority gave vesting contracts. This is the term they use, vesting contracts to several new power generating companies to build additional capacity amounting to 3,000 megawatts. So in three years, 3,000 megawatt additional capacity. At that time, demand for electricity was 7,000 megawatt, but the existing power generating company already produced more than 7,000. So when you add on another 3,000, what happened? The capacity become two times of the demand. And because the capacity is two times of the demand, the wholesale price of electricity dropped. How much did it drop? It dropped from $215 per megawatt hour in 2011. It dropped to $63. You just imagine you run any business, you pay for your goods coming in at the market price, and your selling price dropped to one third. Okay, and why does it drop? because the Energy Market Authority 
give license to new power plant to produce electricity and make the over capacity two times of the demand one industry expert said the additional capacity of 3000 megawatt was totally unnecessary now the, the additional capacity was outside the control of high flux or of the existing power generator they got no way to stop it it is a decision of the energy market authority to give new license for the power generator now those new power generator between 2012 to 2014 they got vesting contract what does that mean it means that the EMA tell them you have to produce this quantity of electricity and I give you this price a certain price according to a formula and you must produce this into the national grid so the new generator first were given a price higher than uh, based on a formula and they are required to produce a certain quantity into the national grid the price that the new generator get based on the formula my friend calculated two times of the high flux price they were able to get about $160 no, $130 high flux got 63 okay so the new generators guaranteed a, a, a higher a certain price which was quite okay but because of the oversupply the market price dropped to $63 so this is the reason why high flux got into so much trouble now I read the EMA website they make very clear if you want to generate power it is a commercial decision you decide but I want to say this the new generating company when they apply for the license they can decide commercial viable or not but existing companies already built the plant already producing the power they can't they can't make any more commercial decision they are already stuck so when the EMA says it's a commercial decision yes it is a commercial decision for new operators but the impact on existing operators is beyond their control so high flux suffer very big loss the other companies also suffer loss because the wholesale electricity price dropped to so low so in my view the problem faced by high flux is to a large extent caused by the action of the EMA and the EMA is the government because they increase the capacity by so much the price dropped by so much there's nothing high flux can do there's nothing the existing operator can do but they are already stuck to in the case of high flux they already bought their LNG gas at a high price they can't stop the contract because the contract says you don't take you pay so I think high flux therefore was a victim of this over capacity now I don't want to say that total blame go to EMA I think high flux management and the board also must share the blame because their business decision maybe the judgment not so good okay so I say both parties are responsible 
not high flux alone, not EMA alone. So both parties are involved. But whether you blame EMA or you blame the board of high flux, who are the people who lose? You, am I right? You invested in high flux and some of you invested a large part of your retirement saving. Now you are the people who has to bear the loss for this big disaster caused by EMA and caused by the board of high flux. So EMA should not have allowed the capacity to be increased by so much out of control. Appoint new companies and give them guaranteed price and force them to provide so certain additional quantity into the market. And this caused the price to collapse. So EMA also has to take the, the blame. So therefore, I want to call the government take the responsibility. You, you cannot just say it's a commercial decision. It's a commercial decision that is beyond the control of high flux. And it is the ordinary investors that are going to suffer. So I say, take the responsibility and what to do. So I ask, I ask the uh, government, tell PUB take back the integrated plan. Not just the water plan, but water and power plan. Take back the debt and pay a fair price. Not zero, but pay a fair price. Of course, you can't get all your money back uh, because uh, high flux also must bear some responsibility. But I'm sure zero is not fair. Okay, so this is what, I'm, what I call. And what is the fair price? You can appoint an independent panel. You can appoint the, high, the court. But the principle must be, the loss must be shared fairly. Cannot just say, commercial decision, the shareholders of high flux, the investors of high flux will lose all. So it has to be fair. So I want to end this talk to call on the Prime Minister to instruct PUB to pay to high flux for the Tua Spring Integrated Plan a fair price. Do you agree? Yes. Hey, Frank, PM Lee is in Istana, quite far away. He can't hear you. Do you agree? Yes. I think he still can't hear you. Do you agree? Yes. Okay, now, thank you. Uh, I think Alex told me there are no other speakers, so I want to give you two other small speeches. Okay? Today we are very lucky. When Alex says 3 o'clock, I was quite worried. Hot. But today not so hot. So it means someone up there a bit kind to us. Alright? So we must thank up there uh, for not making so hot. Now, uh, about two weeks ago, uh, one investor contacted me. Uh, Mr. Tan, we got a group of people. I think she told me about 100 people. We want to find how we can sue the board of directors of High Flux. Uh, so he says, uh, can you help us to find a lawyer and advise us whether it's a good idea or not? to sue the board of directors of High Flux. So I told her, 
when you sue, it's very expensive. And sometimes uh, the chance of winning not so easy. But I remember MAS and SGX already announced they are investigating whether the disclosure document in 2016 give the full disclosure or not. So I told uh, this, this lady, why don't you wait for MAS and SGX to complete their investigation. And then after they decide, then you decide whether you want to sue. But I said uh, also, why don't you appoint a lawyer now who can just keep a watching brief, just follow and see. So this is, the, uh, this is the, my suggestion and she says, okay. Now in case uh, some of you are interested, I'll find a way to pass your contact to this group. Or maybe you already know because they are all in the WhatsApp group and so on. All right. Now, uh, I look at the prospectus, the 2016 prospectus. I ask you, how many of you read the prospectus? Put up your hand. I read it. How many pages? 197. I read page by page. Halfway, I got giddy. The information they give are standard information. They mean nothing. They ask you what are the risks? Sure, currency go up, got risk. Currency go down, got risk, right? Interest rate go up, got risk. Interest rate go down, got risk. Pages and pages of this rubbish. So I check. Did they, in the 197 page, tell you that Tua Spring was in trouble? That's 2016. Already 2015, it was in trouble. Did they tell you? I can't find. But of course, I only read it very quickly. So you can go back and read, all of you. You got a prospectus. Your money, not my money, I got no money there, okay? It's your money. You read. Did they tell you that it was in trouble? All right? But I, I, when I read through, I can't find. The only signal, hint, was 2015, the profit dropped to a loss. But of course, they say, oh, you know, our business is volatile. Contract come, contract go, and so on. We never tell you we make a loss because of this Tua Spring power plant. They never tell you that. So, just now, one of the investors told me, Mr. Tan, we want to be a financial hub in Singapore. Can we have better protection so that we don't have this kind of problem? Now and then, our reputation is at stake. So I told her, and it's put in my website this morning. I said, uh, I wrote to address to MAS. I don't know whether they read or not. But I think MAS got a lot of very well-paid people. I think they, they, they read what I write. They monitor. So I make two suggestions. All right, so I read, uh, I, read uh, uh, I, I make two suggestions. Uh, one suggestion is I say, in addition to 197 page prospectus that most people don't read, make the board of directors give a five page summary so that you can read the five pages and make them responsible for the five page summary. 
My second suggestion is MAS should appoint an independent financial advisor firm appointed by MAS, not by the company, appointed by MAS to study and advise the investors. And because the financial firm, they got professional, they got time, they can study and tell you whether the investment is okay or not. So these are my two suggestions and I hope that they will. Now my last point, very short speech, is something personal to me. My wife heard I'm coming here and she said, you are already 71 years old. Why do you want to go and speak against the government? Do you know you can go to jail? Do you know you can be sued? Do you know it affects the family? So I told her, in Singapore, everybody is so afraid. Even today, I contact a few people. Will you speak? They say, cannot, Mr. Tan. I work in the civil service. Sure, I can do trouble. Now, I think it's very bad. It's very bad in Singapore if everybody are so scared that even your money is at stake, you cannot speak out except for this lady. She's the one who make all this sign. Now, I want you to know Today, you are affected. Tomorrow, somebody else will be affected by something else. We cannot be selfish. Only when we are affected, we come out. So it's very important if somebody is affected, all of us must come out and give our support. And we must have the courage to speak out. If you are scared, you might get into trouble. You think I'm not scared. Well, I am not scared. But my wife is scared, right? So we must all be willing to stand together and pass a message to the government. If you make a mistake, don't keep quiet. And I'm talking about the overcapacity causing such a big loss. Why for the last six months, no news from EMA, no news from the government. If they come out early and say, we will take some responsibility, high flux today won't be so bad. So it's very important that we must make our voice heard. And we must have the courage to make the voice heard. So that's what I'm going to, what I say. 